Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at Nanite. I was playing around with Nanite and there's some uh, options in Nanite that uh, I haven't seen anybody else talk about. So let's walk through the process of converting an object to Nanite and look at the options we have for that. So in this folder, I have in this um, sarcophagus here, King Tut sarcophagus that I made a long time ago. Uh, and here it is in my inventory, my folder here. And if I just double click on that object, and on the right side here, you can see there's an object to enable Nanite. So just as simple as that, you can check this box and then hit Apply Changes. And now this is now a Nanite object. Okay. And we can look at... Um, we can look at that now. It's nanite, so I should be able to go into this visualization and just look at triangles. And yeah, it's nanite now. Just like that. Okay. Uh, but you might, as you were using it, using nanite, you might not... It might not be as simple as just that. Okay, so in a way, I am kind of getting lucky here that these settings don't mess up this model. Okay, because in the actual scene, this model has been, is not really the actual mesh anymore. Now, it's somewhat of a proxy of the mesh, a nanite proxy of the mesh. All right, so if we open up the object again and we look at it in its object um, window uh, on the right we have a bunch of options here okay this uh, position precision so that's kinda has to do with the positions of each vertice so this is saying how precise do you want your proxy to be or something of a proxy so if we're only, if we just, let's just do the, the most, um, the biggest number and try that. And then below that is minimum residency. So I think this has to do with the minimum amount of megabytes or kilobytes or whatever that the mesh will be. Underneath that we see keep triangle percentage so we want 100 percent of course um time relative error uh, i think that's how much time it takes to calculate it or the error within the calculation same thing here fallback relative error and fallback triangle percentage so no matter what happens it always falls back to this and then we have an error percentage in there Okay, so let's hit apply on this and see what we get. Holy, see that wasn't good. And it's because our precision is so big. Okay, if we make this precision one centimeter and then we recalculate, now we're back to something that looks like the mesh here, but it doesn't look great anymore. Okay, so let's get even more precise. Let's go down to an eighth maybe and do that and so now we're getting back to something that looks more like the original mesh that we had okay now there is also another besides this precision you also have this fallback relative error which is set to one by default okay now I could set this to auto and if I set this to zero and hit this we should get the exact same model that right now with this error at zero um, we're getting the exact same model that we created okay so if you are seeing uh, problems within your nanite model then 
you'll you probably want to lower this error okay so maybe even a 0.5 would do better than one okay so if you want if you're seeing issues with your mesh this is how you can adjust things and something like this you know if this was in our game um you know it's kind of an important thing so i might want like a minimum uh residency much higher like a megabyte you know and that just makes it look clean so now so now we have our nanite mesh looking pretty good um but something you can also do i don't know how important lod's are to nanite uh, theoretically, I think you probably could get away with no LODs on most things. But I want to show, since it's already right here, I want to show you how to do LODs. So on the right side here, we also have an LOD settings, a bunch of options for that. And under LOD settings, you'll see number of LODs. So on something like this, I might do three LODs. You could probably go more. And then I'm just going to apply changes. Take note that I said auto compute LOD distances. Okay, so this is kind of important. Uh, so now let's see how well this did. Right now we're on auto LOD. So it's going to automatically change. And I can see the LOD changes within here within these triangle changes too. So not only visually can I see them, but I can see them changing in these numbers here. So right there, there was a change and then it changed again. These changes are kind of happening way too quickly. So let's adjust that. Um, so I want custom. If we look under here, custom, and that'll show us all of our LODs. So it's showing all of these LODs. And the other thing I want to make sure I check is under LOD settings, auto compute. I want to check off auto compute because now I want to add in my own settings for this. Okay, so LOD zero, um, we're going to look at screen size. So LOD zero wants a screen size of one. Okay, you're always going to have a screen size of 1 for LOD 0. LOD 1 is uh, where things start to get a little tricky, and I can kind of gauge that by what's going on here. So when I'm really close, this would be, you know, a screen size of 1, or even this. But now we're changing right there. Okay, that seems a bit too close to me to, for the first change. So I'm going to set this to 0.5 instead of 0.75. So now let's see where our change happens now. We just had two changes right there. See, we're going from 4 to 03, and then I go back just a little bit, and we're dropping two changes there because the, the next drop is... Um, if we see here, LOD2 right there, let's make this 0.2, something like that. And then they won't happen both at once. So here we have the full model. Then we go just a little bit more and we see the change. And then we go right there is the other change, which is probably not a terrible distance for that. So I kind of like this number, but let's see where the other change happens right there. See, this could be, this is LOD2, 0.15. I'll go 0.15 there and 0.4 on this one. And so let's see these changes. And I, when, I, when these changes happen, I don't want to see the change happening. Okay, because when you're in the game, you don't want to see that happening. So here is the lowest LOD. Then I come up, and now I'm into LOD 1. And now I'm LOD 0. So you, almost nearly impossible to see those changes. 
but that's how you would set them. Uh, what other things in here are important? So within each one of these, you can decide how many triangles you want it to come down. So this one at LOD1 is coming down to 50% of the triangles. Now, I didn't see a huge difference when I was looking at those LOD changes, but... Um, generally speaking, I like to keep this uh, not at 50%, more like 65, something like that. And then I can apply those changes. And then the LOD2, same thing. It's going down to 25%, which is probably good. Um, I didn't see any major um, changes when I was backing out, so... I'm not going to screw with that setting all that much. All right, so now let's save all this and then look at our model in the game. And I can hit play on here too. And yeah, it's nearly oops, nearly impossible to see any of the changes happening. So that's good. And now let's get out of this and look at our nanite. Look at clusters. So this is the object changing as it takes up more or less screen space. But that's a look at how to convert your meshes to nanite. Have a good one, everyone.